We're here with Rowan University head men's soccer coach Scott Baker, student athletes Chad Yates and Jake Loger following Rowan's draw with Stevens in the NCAA tournament second round. Unfortunately for Rowan, Stevens advances on penalty kicks 4-1. Coach, an opening statement. Uh, well, today is obviously uh, disappointing, um, but I want to move by that uh, as quickly as I can because uh, what this group did, uh, what these two guys did, is um, is incredible. It's amazing. Chad, take us through that first goal. Kind of a, a shot from well beyond the 18 on, on that far sideline. What did you see and how did you make that read? Uh, you know, I, I had a shot a couple minutes before. Uh, felt good coming off the foot. So, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a good day. Um, I got the ball. I'm not the fastest player, so you know my decisions have to be a little bit uh, speedier than other guys. So you know I, I saw the opportunity. I didn't really see much in terms of options up the field, so you, you know I, I let it go. And I've been scoring goals all season, so you know it was sort of a, a confidence thing, and you know getting to my spots and trusting my ability. And Jake, Stevens had certainly their fair chances in the first half, but everything on their end seemed bit off. And a lot of it was due to the play of Rowan in the defensive end. What were you guys able to do to, to kind of keep Stevens off balance offensively? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, we've worked on our defensive shape and our organization day in, day out. And just the leaders from the back, the leaders in the midfielders, have just, we're so compact, so, so well working with each other. We have our big guys that can win the header, our small guys that can get in tackles that you don't even see coming. So I think just almost like an unorthodox play that you don't really see from every team is we have our big guys, our small guys, and everything just comes together. And, and we've just put in the work, and you can see that it, it, it works as we go on. Chad, this might seem like a silly question, but such a stark difference in terms of environment, right? It was 70 degrees, bright skies, sunny, so on and so forth. Today, you know, it felt like 30 degrees outside. Does that have any kind of impact on the game, and, and how did y'all prepare for kind of the changing dynamic in the weather? Yeah, I mean, definitely the sun's probably the biggest factor in terms of the game. Um, as you get cooler weather, I think it may benefit or hurt some people in uh, aspects of, you know, fitness and endurance throughout the game. So I think some guys who may be able to go the distance with the cooler weather, you may be either affected negatively or pos positively in that way. Um, like I said earlier, the sun, you know, it plays the biggest factor in everything. Um, trying to keep the goal, goalie's eyes out of the sun and, you know, that, that throws teams off. But, I, I mean, at the end of the day, it was a hard-fought game. The, the conditions were never, at least with us, going to affect anything. We were never going to have an excuse with any of the weather or anything. It's another soccer game that went 90 minutes and some, so, you know, we fought the whole time. Your coach, Steven, gets the equalizer on a bit of a controversial play. Tell Take me through what you saw from your vantage point. Um, well, for I mean, <laughs> there's there's good calls and bad calls, so we're not going to use any excuses. But um, it's uh, an impossibility that it goes in. It's uh, it's against physics, and it, it doesn't go in. That's uh, that's how I saw it. That's how I saw it on the tape. Um, but that's not the way they called it. And then how quickly, Chad and, and Jake, kind of a crazy goal. How how much how quickly or what's kind of your mindset to get everybody gathered and refocused for the final? couple of minutes of regulation yeah I would say it's you know here we go we knew the situation I think we we had the better of the play I mean they probably had more possession on the ball but we've never really been one to possess um, we look for the counter attacks and that's what we did um, so I think we played pretty defensive after we got the goal we knew they were a good team um, so we respected them but you know we kept them on their toes by you know putting constant pressure up up top when, when it goes like that, I mean, we had a PK called against us yesterday that, you know, sort of deflated us again. Um, it's it's all about that leadership from the front. So me and Jake, coaching staff, like, it's go time. Like, especially when you get a call like that that we think is wrong, you know, it's it's more of like a jump start to, you know, like, hey, make sure that goal doesn't even mean anything at the end of the 90 minutes. So unfortunately it, it played a little bit of a role, but I think we, we fought strong until the end. And Coach? Rowan has control of the play in the second overtime period, and then we go to PKs. How confident going into PKs were you and Dylan? Super confident. I mean, Dylan's uh, a big part of the reason that we're here. We won in uh, PKs um, just a little bit ago, and uh, Dylan was the hero uh, that day. 
Um, but when you go into PKs in general, um, it's tough to be confident. It's a, it's a uh, it's a great way to uh, advance, and it's just a, it's a horrible you know horrible way to lose. And Jay, take us through those final thirty seconds after the the winning penalty was, was scored. What did you say to your teammates? What was the kind of conversation with everybody in that long huddle? Uh, I mean, it was just like a going from the senior point, going up to all the seniors. Like we've, especially me, Chad, Alex, and Michael Ferrar. Like we've been here since freshman year. We've been working towards this since freshman year. So there's four years that we've kept in, kept grinding. It was just like a a bittersweet moment that like it's over, and now. Being with the experience that we had, and now that the younger guys have, just going to them saying, "Hey, like, thank you guys for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for battling for us. Thank you for giving everything you had." And you know, next year, they have them now. Like, th they're missing a couple of us now, but like, they they have that. They have the experience. They have the fight in them that they have, and they're all going to be bigger, stronger, better players. So, I think next year, just honestly, watch out for Rowan again. Did you had a similar message from you to your teammates? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always a reality check when, you know, you think something should go your way and it, it doesn't really pan out for you. Um, as, those fi as that final PK is made and, you know, you, you start to reflect on your whole soccer career, I mean, you start looking at moments individually um, that aren't even in college. Then you, you go through all your times in college, you see – the work you put in every single day, um, it's different from all the little kid stuff that you do in terms of soccer related stuff. You're with these guys every single day, every day of the week, you know, these are your brothers that they turn out to be. So it's, you start looking around at everyone and it's a, it, like Jake said, bittersweet, of course, because yeah, we accomplished something. Um, we, we won a conference tournament, then we come here, we put up a good fight against multiple teams, you know, you could go, the list goes on and on, but, um, just that looking around, thanking everyone, because um, the message with our team is do it for the seniors, because eventually you'll you'll be there yourself. So, uh, as the upperclassmen, um, I think our guys did a great job. That I don't think we got doubted our whole season. So you know it's awesome to even be sitting here. Not many college teams get to the point where we are now. Coach, what is this graduating class meant to you? Meant to the program? Um. It's uh, it's tough to put words. Um, these guys, the Ferreras, we had, we have had uh, some other, uh, some other players that are seniors this year. But this group of four, um, it just completely changed the program and raised the whole level. Um, they're irreplaceable. Uh, what they did was absolutely amazing. Um, we missed the COVID year, but three years in a row going to the NCAs, three years in a row, um, winning an NCA, at least one NCA game. Uh, three years in a row to the NJAC finals, an NJAC final championship. Um, it's on. It's on these seniors. Um, they're just such a uh, amazing bunch. Uh, I think they did raise the level for the whole program, um, and we could bounce bounce off of that next year. Um, but we can't replace these guys, and and they mean so much to the program, so much to me, so much to the coaching staff, so much to the team. They're they're incredible. Congratulations on an outstanding season. Thank, Thank you. you.